but our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, our first lesson in 1 Kings, um, as from our reading, um, it, it's about Elijah. And what, what happened before our text today was Elijah had his contest with the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, where they, you know, um, they were going to see who could, which god would light their sacrificial fires, you know, their, uh, their ox, whatever it was that they were sacrificing. And so the prophets of Baal, you know, they dance around and do all this stuff and absolutely nothing happens. Then Elijah, you know, says the word and his, his sacrificial offering um, is lit immediately and burns. And this is after Elijah did everything he could, poured water and so on to make it like impossible to burn. Uh, and yet, you know, obviously then God lights his fire. So Elijah wins the contest. And the point being that, you know, Elijah's God is the God. And that these prophets of Baal might have just been, might as just as well have been worshiping the wind, you know, because it amounted to nothing. Well, Elijah had all the prophets of Baal, since they were the false prophets, let's say, uh, they were all put to death. And when the king, Israelite king Ahab, hears this, you know, he is, um, to a large extent, uh, I'll say a little bit miffed by what Elijah had done. Although he is an Israelite himself, his wife Jezebel is not. She's from a foreign country. And her country, they were into Baal. And so when she heard what Elijah had done and that all these prophets had been put to death, you know, she now is out to get Elijah. Elijah's name in Hebrew is a very simple thing. It just simply means my God, Eli, uh, is the Lord, the J-A-H at the end, which is kind of a, a 19th century German pronunciation uh, for the W that, you know, that we would be there. But Elijah and people named Elijah today or Eli, it just talks about my God, my God is the Lord. So Elijah is coming from this, uh, I'll say, magnificent victory where he showed that God is the God and that all these, all these other gods just simply amount to nothing. And yet what happens, now the queen Jezebel has put a price, let's say, on Elijah's head. So in our text this morning, Elijah is running for his life. Uh, and he probably um, doesn't feel great since he's won, and who knows how many people, how much of the army got sent to find him. So it talks out that after all this, he has gone a day's journey into the wilderness, and after that, he, he sits down under a tree, and then he asks that he might die, you know, which is the exact same thing that Jonah does. When Jonah sees that God is going to save the Ninevites, Jonah figures, you might as well just put me to death, you know, because I just don't like this God that is merciful and that forgives everybody, and not just Israelites. And Elijah's in, in a very real way in the same sense here. He just wants to die. He doesn't see that his life is worth anything. He goes on and he says that, I'm no better than my ancestors. Obviously, they are all dead. And he's saying, I might as well be like them. So he, go, he goes from this, this great victory that should be showing everybody, you know, which is the God. Uh, and now he is, I guess we would say, depressed. And he wants to die. You know, I'm no better than my ancestors. So then he lays down under this tree and he falls asleep. And says, suddenly, you know, an angel comes to him and says, eat. And so he eats, and um, it says, you know, it was a, a cake, probably just bread, uh, baked on the hot stones, and a jar of water. So he ate and he drank. The wilderness is a really dry desert, almost like type place. <clears throat> 
So after he eats, he lays down again and falls asleep. And this time, the angel of the Lord comes a second time and touches him and says, get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. So again, we see that Elijah is sort of in the middle of a journey. He's not actually in the middle of it. He's hardly started the journey. But the angel, and the word for angel is also the word for messenger. So a messen uh, the messenger of the Lord comes and tells Elijah, you've got to eat and drink. You've got a way to go yet, bud. So he got up, he ate and drank, and then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God. So, you know, we hear this story and we think about, you know, Elijah and this magnificent victory and like 24 hours later, he's fearing for his life as well as he should have been fearing for his life. And he's discouraged, uh, he's depressed, he wants to die. And, you know, in the course of, we'll say that night, you know, a messenger from God, an angel comes and says, eat and drink. And the second time, eat and drink, because you've got a long way to go. And so he, he has 40 more days to go to get to the mountain of God, to get to, well, Mount Sinai is the name that we're mostly used to, but it's also called Mount Horeb, which is in the text for this morning. So he, and, and then in the strength of that food, what he had the second time, that lasts him until he gets to the mountain and is, you know, there his, uh, he, he, I'll say, meets God and, you know, his, let's say, future is sort of mapped out and laid out for him. So we think about, you know, ourselves and uh, being fed for service. Elijah is the second most important person in the Old Testament next to Moses. And in Jewish communities where they have a, a Seder feast, in their, whether it's in their homes, they always leave an empty seat. And that empty seat is for Elijah. Because Elijah, as you may remember, uh, is ascended into heaven in a whirlwind. And so in, in a very real way, Elijah never dies in the traditional sense of, you know, all humans. And so because he was, I'll say, bodily ascended into heaven, you know, they leave this empty place for him. I don't know that any of us would, you know, consider ourselves to be of the stature of an Elijah, but, you know, maybe we should, because just as God uh, calls Elijah to be God's messenger, you know, haven't we been called to be God's messenger? You know, we have. And when we hear about Elijah being fed with, you know, the bread and the water, you know, when we, when we have communion, okay, it's, it's bread and wine, but the point is still the same. We are being reminded about what God has done for us. We are being fed so that we can go on and be the, uh, God's messengers in the world today. And we do, you know, communion is, is a reminder to us each and every Sunday that, you know, we are God's forgiven people. And why does God forgive us? So we can sit back and pat ourselves on the back and sing, Jesus loves me. You know, boy, that wasn't the point of Jesus' death. That isn't the point of Moses. That isn't the point of Elijah. You know, God feeds these people. God forgives these people. God forgives us for the sake of mission not for the sake of, again, our own, I'll say, good feelings, but for the sake of, of God's people throughout the world. And so in a short while, uh, we'll be getting fed again, and we'll be remembering uh, Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and ascension. And we will uh, remember that this is for each of us, and it's for each of us that we might be fed, like Elijah is being fed, as Jesus talks about in the gospel, think about how many needy people Jesus feeds in these last few Sundays. Think about all the stories that we've heard about, you know, the, the feeding of, of people who needed food. And, you know, we, we remember those things and we remember what God has done for us. And again, it's not just so we can sit back and say, Jesus loves me, 
but it's so that we don't sit back. It's so that we get up, and it's so that we, we are the messenger um, that Elijah is, that Moses was, that the disciples were. And so, you know, that's, that's what we are all about and why we're here and why we take communion. Uh, we are simply reminded about how God calls, you know, each of us um, for the sake of God's creation, for the sake of God's people throughout the world. <clears throat> so, you know, we have been fed as well as Elijah was fed, as the 5,000 were fed, uh, as so many others have been fed. And we're fed so that we can continue and so that we can continue our journeys. And maybe sometimes it feels like a wilderness, but we've, we are called and we are fed so that we can be God's messengers. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.